This is Hayden Williams, head coach here at Bolivar Central High School. Uh, really looking forward for the 2022 football season. Got a lot of guys returning from last year, so we're really excited about it. Coach, you have one season as the head coach of Bolivar Central under your belt, and you are ready to start year two. What lessons did you learn about being the head coach, and how has that influenced your methods going into this season? Um, the biggest thing was that I don't know as much as I thought I know. Uh, so when I got the job, obviously I thought I knew a lot about football. You know, I thought it would translate playing the game, watching the game a whole lot, but it doesn't. There's a lot of things behind the scenes that go into it. So just adjusting, learning on the fly, it's really big for me going into year two. With that adjusting, uh, you're also serving as the defensive coordinator. What are the greatest challenges you're facing taking on two of the three big roles for the coaching staff? Uh, biggest thing would, like I said, be personnel. Um, Trying to get the right personnel in the game while also getting the play call in is a little bit of a challenge. But I got some great new assistant coaches that help me with personnel. So that's probably the biggest challenge that I'll face. We've played two scrimmages so far. What did you see in the team during those scrimmages, and how do you think that will translate into the regular season? I've been really excited from our first two scrimmages. We had uh, Kingsbury and Fayette Ware both come into town. Uh, we won both of them. Fayette Ware was a little bit tougher for us, but it was good to see what our guys had from that. But I've been really excited about the growth from our defense and our offense this offseason. Which players have stood out to you in preseason uh, practice for whatever reason? Uh, the biggest one right now for me is probably Jaden Kessler. He's a sophomore. Um, we have him going both ways right now. So just his growth from his freshman to his sophomore year was really big. Um, another one would be Marcus Harris. He's going to be a senior for us. He's going to have to go both ways. He's grown a lot, not only as a player, but as a leader. And then uh, Carson Howell, he'll play quarterback for us. And he's also, he's shown a lot of leadership this offseason, trying to get the guys to learn the offense, the new offense we're putting in. So those three guys really stand out. Walk us through your game week prep. What do y'all do starting on Monday to get you ready for Friday? Uh, Monday, we usually start off with a lift. Uh, we like to watch a little film on Monday as well, and then it's more of a mental day for us. So we'll go out with just helmets on, stuff like that, talk through what we're going to see this week from defenses. This week we got Scott's Hill, so we talk through a lot of what we're going to see from Scott's Hill. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday are our work days, so those are days we're in full pads. We'll go full go, offense, defense, special teams, hitting, everything. Thursday is going to be our base walkthrough, just trying to clean everything up, and then Friday it's go time. You were talking about the new coaches earlier. We've added some new coaches. Some have left and we've replaced them. How much have these new coaches meant to you in terms of building this program? Uh, it's been huge. Uh, just getting guys who are all on the same page, um, kind of have the same goals as you, it really helps create uh, create that culture that you're looking for out of a program. So getting guys in here that are like-minded and want to uh, build the same things you're wanting to build. It's been great. Coach Williams, what do you expect from your team and what can your team expect from you? Uh, I expect my team to show up every day with a lot of energy, a lot of passion, and just want to, wanting to learn, wanting to improve every day. Uh, for me, I, I think they can expect the same thing. I come with a lot of energy every day. Uh, any of my guys can tell you I'm out there yelling, screaming. I'll run around with them. Um, I think it's a family, so you just got to all grow and bond together. Coach Scott Hill, as you said, is this Friday. Last year, it's a game I think everybody thought we could win, and we had 17 kids out due to COVID protocol. What do you see for this year? I'm really excited about this game this year. Like I said, we have our new offense coming in, so I think that'll – hurt them a little more on their defensive side than we were able to last year with the wing tee. Uh, like I said, getting 17 of those guys back, a lot of them being starters, will be huge for us. Um, it's definitely a winnable game. So I expect to see us come out there, compete, put forth a lot of effort, and get that win. OK, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Coach Sheets, can you discuss your offensive philosophy a little bit? Uh, the biggest thing for us offensively is to spread teams out and try to exploit the passing game. A lot of teams in West Tennessee are 
key on stopping the run, and they're strong on the run game. Uh, if you're able to throw the football, you've got an advantage over most teams you're going to play. After running the wing tee for the past few years, what difficulties did you encounter in revamping this offense? It's a challenge. You've got to really understand kind of where you're going and what you're coming from. Uh, we really had to simplify our offense and help our linemen understand. They don't have to understand as much in the playbook. And then with our skill guys, it was teaching them the basics at certain positions to understand how to get open. Coach Raspberry, it's no secret that you're into strength and conditioning. What have you done for the players to prepare them for this season? Uh, when I stepped in, I kind of peeled back a little bit, and we focused a lot on movement uh, in the off season and in season as well. Um, we kind of gone away from trying to bust out, you know, all the big weights and stuff like that. We really want to go through a full range of motion on our exercises, and um, you know, look at things like tendon health, joint health, and look at the longevity of the athlete. Coach, we lost four starters on our line from last year. How have these new guys filled in those gaps? Um, so when I first got here, I had an idea of what I was working with, and these guys kind of filled in those roles as time gone on. Some progressed a little bit quicker than others. Some kind of need a little bit longer to progress. But the five that we have up front right now uh, really slipped into the roles as the summer went on. They showed great improvement when it talked to blogging technique and knowledge gain, communication. Um, the five that we have up front are the best suited for our offense right now. Coach Sheets, we moved the ball in our scrimmage games. How much of our offensive playbook did we see? There's still parts of our playbook we haven't scratched on at all. Um, really maybe only seen about half of the playbook so far in the scrimmages um, and been able to exploit teams with that. So hopefully moving forward, if we can kind of continue that in these first few weeks and not really show too much before the region games, that's going to be a big benefit for us. What goals do you both as coaches have for the offense this season? Uh, for me, offensively, it's, it's getting back to consistency. I think, you know, playing against Bolivar in previous years and, and seeing the program throughout the years, it, it's been inconsistent. You've had times where they're good, times when they're bad. There's, there's no real structure there. So getting back to consistency this year is going to be the biggest key for me. Uh, just having a more overall balanced offense. Um, it's no secret that I like to run the ball and Coach Sheets likes to throw the ball from time to time. And I think if we have a good balanced offense that we are going to have great success this season. Not being from Bolivar, uh, on a game day, how do you embrace that hometown environment? For me, it's, you know, I've, I've been close to Bolivar. I've played against Bolivar when I was in high school. I've coached against them several times. I know there's a great community involvement. Um, there's a lot of excitement around game days in the past. Uh, I haven't seen it this past few years. We hope to generate that excitement leading into games. Uh, when I first stepped into this program, the kids, the athletes, they really kind of accepted me as a coach into their program, and that kind of brought on a little bit of a spirit of Bolivar. And then when I stepped to the classroom, you know, about a week, a week and a half ago, I mean, kids, students, athletes, administration, coaches, other coaches as well, really accepted us new coaches stepping into the school, into this community. And I think that's kind of fired up us and our school spirit. All right, thank you, coaches. Thank you. Marcus, you're a player that has put in some time and effort into the weight room. How do you stay motivated to do that when you don't get the glamour of a Friday night game? Well, mostly I just think about the Friday night game and how I'm going to dominate the player across from me on the game. Karan, you play on both sides of the ball. Where do you think you're most effective and why? Uh, I would say offense because – as a receiver, I feel like as you being across from the ball for me, that you can't stop me and I can catch the ball good. Josiah, you came back after a year off from the team. What brought you back? Um, the new offense we're running, I was excited to be a part of it. Marcus, would you rather pancake a D lineman or get a tackle for loss? Well, me personally, I would pancake a D lineman. It takes his confidence out for the rest of the game. I can easily handle them. 
Josiah, you're a multi-sport athlete. What lessons from baseball can you bring to both yourself and the entire football team this season? I think baseball helps me to know what to do for a team sport and how to play a team sport. There's a new offense this season. What steps have you guys taken to be comfortable with it? Um, I take pride in the new offense and learn my position in and out and learn the rest of my teammates on the O-line position. I would say that staying in shape, because it is no offense, you have to be in shape. And we don't condition, but during practice, you're going to run hard. I think the biggest thing is our tempo. Marcus, as team captain, what are your responsibilities? My responsibilities as team captain would be to lead the team, correct mistakes within my skill group, and be a role model for the future of the team. As seniors, what are you most excited about this season? I would say having a winning season, changing the program, and playing at the next level. Really just having a winning season. I would say grinding out with my fellow teammates. All right, thank you guys. Carson, you've had to learn a new offense. What kind of time and preparation did you put in? You know, going home and studying my playbook and getting into that and perfecting what I put in, ran through my head the night before has really helped through the summer, and I think it'll help through this upcoming season. Kiwan, you've worked hard in the off season in the weight room. How much of an impact do you feel that has had on you and your game compared to last season? I feel like I'm in better shape and can move people around. Carson, what improvements to your game have you made in the off season? Definitely mechanics. My mechanics are more sound, and I feel like it helps – fit balls tighter in tighter windows and can help my throws um, down the season. Kiwan, moving to DN, what steps have you taken to perfect your new position? Well, I've been working out with other D-line coaches. Trench Mob, I've been working out with him. He teaches me a lot of moves, and hopefully they can help me. Carson, with the quarterback being the leader of the offense, how have you motivated your fellow players? Um, you know, keeping everybody in good spirits and trying not to have, um, like, bad vibes with the teammates, that helps keep us, um, I think, as a whole. And I think it, if we keep it up, then we can really do something great this year. All right, how do you guys prepare for game day mentally? Um, mentally for me, uh, you know, Thursday is our walkthrough day, short day. Uh, every, every Thursday after um, a, a walkthrough, I'll go down to Hometown Pizza, get a milkshake, go home, check my playbooks out, run stuff over, check out the defense on uh, film, see thing, what might be open and what might not be open, and uh, go from there, try to keep my head straight for the rest of the day, wake up next day, do it. Oh, shit. Um, listen to Finesse two times, and we're going to turn up Friday. All right, thank you, guys. <laughs>